It's the most wonderful time of the year. Oh, yeah, <laughs> not allowed to sing. Anyway, I'm pretty sure that many of you watching this video are among the sizable number of people around the world who traded in an internal combustion engine vehicle for an electric one this year. Congratulations. I'm also betting that the majority of people watching this are residents of the Northern Hemisphere and, according to our own Google Analytics, are likely to live somewhere or be traveling somewhere in your new electric car where there just might be snow. And given that the news media is constantly telling us how terrible electric vehicles are in the white stuff, we all figured it was time to let you know what to do if it snows and you're heading somewhere in your EV. Because contrary to popular belief, EVs are just fine in the snow, like any vehicle, within reason. The mercury is plummeting, there's a snow warning on the way, and if you're wondering if you should leave your EV at home and get a rental car instead for that cross-state or cross-country trip to family for the holidays, you might be a little worried. You might have made the trip before in the summer, but this will be the first time in cold weather. And you've heard all of those horror stories about cold weather and electric vehicles. But the reality is that EVs are, for the most part, just fine and dandy in the cold, no matter what that weird uncle likes to tell you. We here at the channel have been driving EVs for many, many years as our daily drivers, and we've had our fair share of bad weather to deal with. Granted, living here in the Pacific Northwest, none of us get huge amounts of snow every year, but I've done my fair share of winter driving both here and in the Arctic, and I live up in the foothills of the coast range where we do tend to get significantly more snow in the average winter than those in downtown Portland, thanks in part to the increased elevation at my house. Last winter, we got well over a foot here when the rest of the region was dealing with slush and sleet. Meanwhile, Kate Walton Elliott, living and working around the Salish Sea, often finds her winter commutes to her other job. She's an emergency room nurse for part of the week, in case you didn't know. Tends to be on unplowed roads at the butt crack of the this shouldn't be legal in the morning time. And thus she's got a fair bit of wintry, snowy EV driving experience too. And I know. People are watching this right now, laughing at us because you live somewhere where you get huge amounts of snow. Maybe upstate New York, or perhaps you get lake effect snow where you live. But with this winter's El Nino pattern, you're going to be getting more snow than usual. And while places with higher snow levels in winter are usually better at clearing the road, it doesn't hurt to be prepared. The first thing I want to say about winter driving in your EV is something that might be too late to do if you're about to make that immediate trip for the holidays. Make sure you have good winter shoes. EVs are, by their very design, capable of putting a huge amount of torque down to the wheels, and when the weather isn't great, you want decent grip. In the last 10 years or so, all-season tyres have become a whole lot more capable in inclement weather than they used to be, but they're not the best when there's lying snow, and if you're going to be driving your EV in snow in winter a lot, you should consider switching out those tyres for a better alternative. The first option is, of course, to go with dedicated winter tyres, like those produced by Nokian. I'm a big fan of the Nokian Hakkapelita tyres, which frankly, I think are the best non-studded winter tyres on sale, but there are plenty of other good choices out there. Winter tyres have siping designed to grab a decent amount of snow as the wheel rotates, which in turn actually improves your grip and gets the wheel going where you want it to. And while some people do swear by studded winter tyres, the latest generation of non-studded winter tyres are usually more than enough unless you're going ice lake driving, in which case <laughs> studded tyres do have an edge. If you don't want to go all out on winter tyres, consider replacing your car's stock all-season tyres with all-weather tyres. Not to be confused with all-season tyres, all-weather tyres 
a tyre is designed to be capable of working all year round, but they also have the same snowflake symbol as dedicated winter tyres, along with some siping to help you get a grip when there's lying snow. If that sounds like too much, the next item on your list is some kind of traction aid. But here's where warnings get real, because most modern EVs on sale today are not designed to be used with snow chains. And if you use them on your EV, then suffer an issue, the chances are your car's manufacturer might decide not to continue honouring your warranty. Similarly, some insurance companies do take a very dim view of people using snow chains on cars they're not designed to be used with, and again, could invalidate any claims arising from improper use. I'm not entirely sure why so many EVs are banned from using snow chains by their manufacturers, but I'm going to guess it's got something to do with the generally small clearance between wheel and wheel arch, as well as the potential for a poorly fitted chain coming off and impacting itself in your car's battery pack. That said, while restrictions on snow chain use would be considered enforceable in some markets around the world, they're viewed as more likely strong suggestions and threats in others. At the end of the day, it's your car and you're an adult. At least, I hope so. <laughs> so before you use snow chains, do some research and make your own mind up. While snow chains might be out of the question, snow socks, meanwhile, are most certainly just fine. They're also usually easier to put on than snow chains and don't take up as much space in your boot or trunk or even frunk. Of course, practicing how to put them on and take them off again is a really good thing to do before any winter trip because you really don't want to be stuck on the side of I-80 with trucks rolling by swearing about your life choices, do you? Talking of which, I'm going to assume you're going to pack all of the usual winter weather things for a snowy holiday trip. You know, like a shovel, blankets and hot drinks. Right? Winter prep out of the way, let's talk about driving. As I mentioned earlier, EVs do have incredible amounts of torque from near standstill, and when driving in inclement weather, allow yourself some extra time to pull away. Mash the pedal to the floor and you will likely make the wheels go and go nowhere fast. But get going steadily and you'll have fewer problems. When you're actually underway, you'll likely find that the weight distribution of your EV and its lower centre of gravity should keep everything behaving sensibly. If you keep your car out of sport mode, you're going to be more than capable of making good progress as long as you follow the standard driving any vehicle in the snow mantra, which is basically imagine you're dancing with a, a very large hippopotamus. Or perhaps maybe a T-Rex. Personally, I think that when you have your EV set to use regenerative braking on accelerator liftoff, you're also less likely to suffer any consequences coming to a stop, especially if your car has true one pedal driving. In fact, honestly, the only time I've actually skidded in the snow in an EV was when I tried to use friction braking. Driving with one pedal certainly does take some practice, but it does make snow driving easier and gentle movements with the accelerator should keep you pointing in the right direction and remaining safe. Of course, if you're really lucky, your EV may have a snow mode, although that's kind of rare among most EVs today. Essentially, all snow mode does is to remap the accelerator pedal to make it harder to put large amounts of power down to the wheels during initial pedal travel, and in some cases can even reduce the amount of power you can use. Honestly, though, if your car has a eco mode of some description, it's usually a similar effect, as eco mode also tends to remap the go pedal, so you have to press it further for the same effect when compared to regular operational modes. Additionally, while we are on the subject of driving, I should probably talk about cruise control and semi-autonomous features because, well, many, many EVs now have some kind of level two semi-autonomous capability. Do not, under any circumstances, engage cruise control, lane keep assist, or anything more advanced like autopilot or full self-driving beta when it is snowing. Frankly, if you think your car will cope with that kind of weather on its own, there is a very big gap between your perceived expectations and capabilities of the car versus the real world. 
Frankly, though, the same is true of any system like this in any sub-optimal driving condition. Basically, if there is a large risk that your vehicle will lose grip and start to slide, you shouldn't be using any kind of advanced driver assistance feature. The same is true of driving on mud or gravel. Just, just don't do it. If you want to drive on that stuff, you're going to have to do the hard work and actually do the driving yourself. Misuse such systems and you might lose your car, or in fact, worse. Before we get to the last bit, getting out of trouble, let's talk about range and charging. In the winter, your range will be reduced. The colder it gets, the smaller your range will be. This is due to many, many different factors, from the fact that air is denser when it's cold and requires more energy to push through, to the fact that you tend to use more energy in cold weather to keep yourself warm in the cabin, and also because battery packs are like us humans, they perform better when it's neither super cold or super hot. That said, I've gone into the various reasons for this in the past, and I don't want to repeat myself here, but the too long didn't read is that you need to be prepared for shorter distances between charging stations as you might be for a same trip in the summer. You should also prepare for longer waits at charging stations as well as a longer time charging because again, if your battery pack is cold and the outside temperature is low, your car will likely charge more slowly. This though is, by the way, why you should always check to see if your car has some kind of battery preconditioning. If it does, activate it on your trip long before you hit the charging station because it will not only make your charging experience more pleasant, but it could also make your battery pack happier and more responsive to both current drain and current dump. Finally for charging, preconditioning before you leave is also a big thing. So try to time your departure in advance so that your car's cabin and battery pack are all ready and toasty to go just when you are. There are, of course, so many benefits to preconditioning before departure, including minimizing heater drain during your drive, and of course, not having to worry about clearing ice and snow off your windows, because usually it will just melt if your car's been sat heating up for about half an hour prior to departure. So we've done driving, we've done charging. So how about when things do go wrong? First, be smart. Don't drive through snow that's drifted and don't attempt to drive on roads that are obviously impassable. And it's also important to keep to your own skill set. You may find that a road that you're not comfortable driving on might be passable by someone else in an identical car, but only because that driver has better winter skills than you do. Basically, don't be a hero. Finally, EVs, like most modern computer controlled cars, do tend to get a little fussy when it comes to getting out of a sticky situation, i.e. when you get stuck. Traction control in most modern EVs will immediately step in if the wheels are detected as spinning. Sometimes spinning your wheels a little furiously does work if you're stuck in a rut and you just need to get out of it to continue your trip. And as various laws of the universe seem to dictate if you are stuck and you need some help, it's likely that your car's traction control will kick in at the exact moment your car has started to move forwards out of wherever it is in fact stuck. As a consequence though, it's always a good idea to learn how to turn off your car's traction control so that if you do get stuck, you have a way of getting out. But it's also worth noting that common sense prevails. Make sure that nobody is in the way of your car and make sure that you don't bury your car further by just burying the pedal to the floor. The smart rule is that if you're getting nowhere after a few tries, stop and come up with another plan. So there you have it. Pack warm, drive smart and plan your charging. And I hope your holiday trip is a very good and safe one. Let us know in the comments if you're going somewhere nice and tell us about your own winter driving experiences. Thanks for joining me today, and if you've got thoughts, make sure you leave them below in our Discord chat room, or you can reach out to us on Mastodon. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling on your screen right now. They are some of the more than 1,500 people who help fund this channel through Patreon and YouTube. They help cover our bills, pay our team, and make sure that we can be 100% independent. 
If you'd like to join them, and of course see your name listed here, just follow the links below. There are a range of different tiers you can sign up for, from as little as just $1 a month, or if you pay yearly, just under $11 a year. A huge welcome to our newest supporters, Nathan Plowman, Hanno, Bender, Estelle, and Sarah J. Goodfriend. If you'd like to support us with a one-off donation, you'll find links below to make Kofi and Bitcoin donations. And we even have a good old-fashioned PO box you can reach us at. The address is linked to below. And if you're in need of some swag, you should also check out our swag store in the down below too. We've got some great content coming up, so make sure you'll subscribe on Peertube or YouTube, and we'll see you soon. Don't forget, we make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you want more, the mighty algorithm thinks you'll like this video, but we think that this one is also worth a look. See you soon, and as always, keep evolving.